Hello, I am Audrey Guerre from Life DMA. So as a network, we're creating those spaces for our members to meet, to exchange, and we produce some tools so that they can find the best practices and try to implement them on their own level. We produce studies uh, and observation so that they can have like concrete uh, facts about what they are, what they represent, and then they can knock at the door of policymakers and say, hey, look, we're uh, cultural actors, we have strong economic value, but we also have strong cultural and social value, and we need to cooperate on that. Well, there's uh, quite uh, some challenges. I think that uh, small venues are at the bottom of the music chain, so this is where the artists start their career. Uh, maybe artists that will become very famous someday, but also where amateur musician can also just have some place in the city or in the rural areas to practice music, which is very important. This is also the places where um, the audience can, like it's a social place uh, in, in our neighborhoods, so it's very important places in our different territories. So this is why we must preserve them because uh, they also have very fragile uh, business models. Sometimes they're not recognized as cultural actors, so it's very important to say that they are cultural and artistical uh, places. And there's also not that much um, reinvestment from the music industry into these uh, small music venues that are at the bottom uh, at the music chain of the music chain. Yeah. The situation is quite different from a country to another. The situation is quite a specific also I know in Spain with the competition between um, festivals organized by uh, public uh, like municipalities that organize uh, free festivals during the summertime. So actually people, citizens are used to see main acts for free. So they won't spend money during the rest of the year to go to a concert to uh, see an emerging artist that they are maybe not that aware of.